Um, welcome back to the channel, people. KG is back. Uh, well, we're gonna have to change this on the fly. <laughs> uh, the best laid plans, eh? The best laid plans. Look, I'm gonna have to change the title of the video. There is no battle. Listen, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. I thought today we were gonna have news of a signing to, to bolster the squad. Um, but as, as I was going live and I was, as I was collecting information, obviously a lot of people in the chat are saying it already, but there was already a red flag from a previous post from Fabrizio. And I thought, okay, with Luton interested in this player, maybe it's not going to happen, but by Belgian sources, you would think that he was set to come here. But as I've said many times, the Premier League is an unbelievable character dangle. And uh, I think we've just fallen victim to it yet again. Um <laughs> Okay, let's 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 get on with the show, yeah. Uh please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and of course drop your comments below. Um <clears throat> Lord Shiagraf saying probably an agent decision over a footballing one. Well, listen, for the people that are listening, um we were oh man, this this seems so it seems so old now. <laughs> we were linked with uh Japanese international Daiki Hashi Hashioka. Uh, from STVV back over in Belgium. Uh, Japanese international, although not, not regular, and it was rumored to be a, a fee for around 2 million. So you're talking a good sweet spot there, 24 years old. And, you know, obviously he's been scouted for a while in terms of, of for Leeds United. They would have been looking at this for a while, seeing if it's a deal worth doing. And at 24, I, I think that that's a good deal. I've not seen him play, and, and I'll just say that. 2 million is a very low risk. And, you know, people won't like to, to hear this, but it being a Japanese international, you probably make that back in shirt sales. You know, it's great commercially for the club if you were to get it over the line. As we've seen, though, and first of all, the first the first one was Mike, Mike McGrath, who you guys know I trust uh, a lot. He's got a very, very, very good hit rate. But even then, there were still signs uh, from Belgium here and, and many other journalists over in Belgium, like uh, here, David van den Broek, I'm going to say, Broek. Um, that he's going to come to Leeds United over Luton. Well, well, <laughs> people, let me just get this one up. Uh, here we go. Here was the Mike McGrath, uh, Mike McGrath talking, and it's like, okay, what's Mike McGrath cooking here? Because I've, I've just, I've just said that you know he's not in the match day squad as well today for STVV. He's they're playing Genk today. He's not in the squad, so he is finalizing a deal elsewhere but Mike McGrath dropped it here Luton are in talks over a permanent deal to sign Japanese international Daiki Hashioka ahead of this week's January transfer deadline day um and blah 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 worth two million and then there it is underneath right there Phil Hay just confirming he's going to Luton so this deal ain't happening for Leeds United people <laughs> oh boy here's me thinking we had some good news to report today it's a different kind of stream, people. What what are we saying, man? Uh, T85 here. Even if there was a Premier League team sat on nil points, it would still be more attractive proposition over us. It, it, it is that at the end of the day. It's the prestige of the Premier League. It's getting your face shown on Premier League TV. There's more exposure for you. You've seen what that's done for even, say, Willy Nanto. You know, you have decent games in the Premier League. Your ratings go up so, so high. And it is, it's true. Unfortunately, it's true. Listen, all things being equal, and, I'm, and I hope none of the Luton fans that may tune into this take this personally, but, you know, it's common sense should prevail. If we're in the same league, you're choosing Leeds United all day long. Although he may look at it and say, how am I going to break in ahead of Archie Gray? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it, all things being equal, we, we, we beat Luton to a signing, as long as the, the promises and money's right, of course. But... It it looks this this one isn't happening, people. I'm gonna say that now. I don't think I don't think this is gonna be one that we're gonna you know try and get. Over. I think it's Luton's now, and it's simple as that. This is a very different stream, people, than I thought it was gonna be. I'm gonna I'm gonna just tell you that. Um, Blink, if you're saying Luton won't stay up, I mean it it doesn't really matter. I mean, gotta say this kind of sounds bitter, doesn't it? Luton won't stay up, but it, it's the fact that he's gonna play you know, not half a season, but a few months in the Premier League. And if he impresses enough and say Luton do go down, he's impressed a future employer. You know, he's got way more exposure playing at Luton Town in the Premier League than he has out in Belgium. And maybe that will do his international prospects better as well. 
Um, Raddy Billy say it's so frustrating. Seriously, though, who are we going to sign at this rate? No idea. No idea, man. No idea. Uh, Ryan here saying, yeah, no longer the pull of the club anymore. It's where the league, where it is league wise. 100% Ryan. A lot of people still have a hard time accepting that, but it, it's, it's true. The Premier League is a big, big character dangle. And this was the post I was talking about, people. This was back in December, Fabrizio Romano saying this. Um, and, I, and I just found it when I was researching. But STVV fullback Daiki Hashioka has multiple opportunities he could leave in January. Dynamo Zagreb, PAOK. So PAOK want Hashioka, but he prefers top five league move. And that's when, again, it kind of just dawned on me that I may have to change the title a little bit. Because I, I said Leeds United are set to, to sign this guy. But when you see Mike McGrath talking, when you look at this, this tweet, he's got CAA, Stella is new agents. We do have uh, some of those clients on our books as well. But obviously, it doesn't matter when you've got Premier League uh, moves or ambitions. So that was another uh, red flag for me. And I guess it, it's come to fruition. Uh, Danny, you, you've been consistent. I'll give you that, Danny. Uh, I've had the gut feeling since January 1st that we weren't signing anyone. I hear you. But we, we have to, though. We have to. As, as someone mentioned earlier, and, and it's gone up in the chat, I, I apologize. But you don't want to be seeing Jamie Shackleton there. You know, if if anything, you wish that you could see Archie Gray back in midfield. But I think it's fair to say with Danny Farker, when something works, he's very, he's not going to change it. So I think even if we do sign a right fullback, like we were planning to do with this one, I think it's still going to be Archie Gray's shirt to lose. Even though everyone would probably prefer him to play in midfield, I think we've seen with Danny Farke, if something's working, I mean, we, we're even talking about Ampadu staying at centre-back now and keeping Gurev in the defensive midfield. Um, Paul Simon here. Have we fallen so far behind teams like Luton we can't even get this player signed? It's the league. It's the league, uh, Paul and, and everyone else. It's just like when we was losing Chris Wood to Burnley. Um Come on, guys. I mean, are you really going to pick Burnley over Leeds United? You're not, are you? But if Burnley are in the Premier League and we are in the Championship, there's only one place to be. Just look at the, the exposure Premier League gets you. Look at the sponsorship deals that it gets players. It's it's a ridiculous money train. It's a ridiculous money train. And money trumps a, a lot of things. Money trumps a lot of things. Uh, Gavin Parry, <laughs> don't want him. He can't do the ailing flop. I, I'll be real with you. Like I say, did not watch this guy. So I will not profess to say that this is the be all and end all signing. But from the clips that I saw, I like the way that he goes in for tackles. And let's face it, we need all the protection that we can get for our goalkeeper. So, you know, it would have been good. So it looks like we are looking for a more defensive minded fullback rather than one that is a, 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 a Roman one. So look, we'll, we'll see who comes up next. We'll see who comes up next, man. Um, Richard is saying, KG, the proof is in the last six winter windows, even with Bielsa, we don't sign players in January. Well, we do sign players in January. One of those was JKA. <laughs> Have you forgotten that one? <laughs> I tell you, the, the, the bank accounts ain't forgetting JKA. But I'm, I'm, I don't go by this kind of stuff, Richard and everyone else. Just, if you haven't signed someone in the last six windows, I don't. this is not true anyway. It, it doesn't mean that you're not going to sign anybody else in the future. It, 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 that just doesn't wash with me. Sorry. Um uh, Matt here, if we stay in the championship, then see what we replace Creed, Georgie, etc. with. Yep, trying to tell him, Matt, we cannot stay in this league. We we will lose We will lose those players. Exactly, Lord Sheograph. Rutter was a January sign. That's what I'm saying. I, I think people just talk uh, for the sake of it and stuff, just to put out stuff. But even if, just to say you, you didn't sign anyone in the last four Januaries, does that mean in the fifth one you're not going to? And especially under new ownership, it's a completely different regime. Well, not completely different, but it is a new regime. Uh, Ian here saying, why not buy a left back and play by a right back? Surely a left-footed left back is more urgent. Furpo will be injured soon. Yeah, I mean, you'd only hope, uh, Ian and everyone else, that we are looking at both. We cannot just go in with one. That It won't suffice. We need help at the fullback positions. That is the that is the one area of weakness that we have. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with you, Ian. I'm with you. Um, let's have a look. <laughs> do much of the duty. Uh, Freddie Mac is saying, if we stay in the champ, we won't lose Cooper for, for Vader or Shaq. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, those are the players that you won't get rid of. I mean, I, I think Pervader and Shaq, aren't they up in the summer? But yeah, you don't lose those kind of players. You, you don't. You keep those ones because no one wants them. And because they shouldn't be here. 
and, and, and it sounded harsh yesterday on the match reaction when I was saying it, but they should not be in this Leeds United team. If we're, if we're serious about promotion, they're not good enough. So it, I was hoping that if we're, when we do sign a right back, maybe Shackleton stays for the rest season. I don't know, but I think that he, he could do the move away and we could use whatever wages he takes up on, on another place in the squad. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Nate here saying, if we got two players in, I'd be very surprised. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised as we know that... Um, Richard, Richard, somebody literally just said that we got Jorginho last last summer, last uh, January. Come on, man, keep up. Um, it, Nate saying if we got two players in, I'd be very surprised. No, I wouldn't be surprised. There's still a lot of business to be done, especially around transfer deadline day. It's never ideal prices. Like let's say if we were to sign this player on transfer deadline day, it would probably go up to say three million rather than the two, maybe three point five. But this is what they've done. If, you, if you're not active, if you're not proactive in the window, get your business done nice and early. This is what you leave yourself open to. And when you're waiting for other dominoes to fall, which it seem, seems like we are doing, this is what happens. Um, let's have a look here. Yeah, Ryan here. If it wasn't for Luton taking this guy, then we would have signed him. So I do believe we will do something. Yeah, I mean... We have to. I think, you know, the, the thing is, the proof is in the pudding when Daniel Farker has said it in, say, maybe the last two uh, pre-match press conferences, maybe even three, but he said it himself, you know, and we've ignored this before when previous managers have said we need something, you know, all of a sudden next week we don't need something. But yeah, we need to follow through with this and, and the 49ers need to back him and help him out. Even if it is just for squad strength, we need that because clearly he don't trust a lot of the bench. <laughs> um. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I was gonna bring up his his page and everything, but there's there's no point now. Is to forget it. <laughs> See you later, uh, Daiki. Um, all the best. <laughs> all the best. How much of a grand opening, grand closing is that on the stream? I'm just glad I didn't record the thing because it would have been out already. <laughs> it would have been so out of date, and it would have only been uploaded for like ten minutes. Crazy, <laughs> crazy. Um... Mr. Ripper here saying uh, 49ers did the same in summer late and stuff. Yeah, we did some, some, actually they did a couple, wasn't it like mid July, but yeah, you're right. They did do a couple of moves late in the window and yeah, that's what I'm saying. As long as they get it done at this stage, it's the 28th of January. As long as they get it done, that's what we've got to hope for. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll talk about the transfer window in a, in a separate stream when the transfer window is done. But yeah, what a grand opening, grand closing on that crazy stuff. So yeah, that is it. And um, th that is it for that. I'm just going to go in on a couple of comments from yesterday. I didn't do Daniel Farker's uh, post-match comments yesterday. Just to, just to tie it up, I, I read the Luton, sorry, not Luton, the Plymouth, <laughs> Luton on my mind. I read the Plymouth, uh, his thoughts on it, and I completely agreed with him. Just going to get your thoughts on this. So if you want to speak in the live chat now or in the comments, please do so. Uh, Farker on the timing of his substitutions. This is, you know, the cup game. I wouldn't say they grew into the game. If you don't kill the game with so many chances after 60, 70 minutes, they they think they speculate a bit more. It's quite normal. I mean, yeah, I mean, it wasn't that they, they grew into the game. They were better in the second half. <laughs> Growing into the game would suggest that we were good in the second half and then Luton just suddenly found a second win and came into it. I, I, I disagree with that, but... Farker is just basically defending his position, saying, listen, I don't want to make changes. Leave me alone. That's what he's basically saying, isn't it? Um, Gavin here saying, poor defending for their goal. Shocking. Yeah, it was all, it was all bad. It was all bad. And uh, and and I would and I say as well with 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 that, um, Melier, I mean, I spoke about him yesterday, but it it was his distribution as well in the game. You know, I'm I'm not even talking about him coming for the, you know, being out of place for the looped looped uh, effort what Byron clears off the line or anything else like that his distribution was so poor yesterday and it didn't help us keep the moves flowing it actually hindered us when it kept going out of play but look Melier will be here until the end of the season it is definitely a position for me that we reassess in the summer no matter what happens no matter what happens because you don't need an asset that's allegedly worth so much in this division if we were to stay here. So I hope that they are making plans if we don't go up to get a solid, just a, a solid goalkeeper at this level and get the money for him and, and strengthen on the outfield. Um, Blinky Fish, why was class and drop for the cup? 
it I, I don't know. I may no in all fairness to Danny Farkey, he does he did say that he wanted to go strong. And if you look at the team, it was very strong. And then he and so that's why he would have played his first choice, which is Melier. Yeah. Uh, Lee Goldra Pierce saying he didn't narrow the angles well enough for their goal either. Melier is just going backwards. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. Um Holy Ghost is gutted. But but in that as well, we was told that Somerville was rested. I, I do need to just highlight this as well. Um, Farker said Somerville had issues with the, with an adductor yesterday, um, the muscle injury. He's hoping that he'll be back in training next week and in contention for Bristol City. So at this moment in time, I thought Somerville, it was reported that, that he was rested. Well, he's got a minor injury issue. And, and for me, that that's a worry because then it's not just choosing out of Jane Anthony and Willie Nonto to take Dan James' place, you're then having to replace Somerville. And yeah, I mean, listen, Jane Anthony at the moment from the game yesterday, he gets the nod in the next game for me, but it's it's a bit risky to have both Somerville and Dan James out. That's a lot of heavy lifting for Jorginho, in my opinion. So hopefully Somerville, we, he's got a week, around a week to, to recover. Let's hope that he's good to go against Bristol City. We need our strongest team as possible. So... Uh, yes, Freddie Mac, they are both injured for a couple of weeks, at least a couple of weeks. Uh, Blinky Fish just on Melier. Melier is so poor, has, just hasn't improved in the last two seasons. He hasn't, he hasn't, um, he hasn't improved at all. He's regressed a lot. And even this season, he's got a lot of clean sheets, but what the, st the stats do tell you as well, that the defense is doing a lot of the work. He's, he's hardly seen any shots. And that's the, that's the worst thing. He's hardly seen any shots. And then some of them that he, he's actually saving or attempting to save, he just looks all over the place. Yeah, he's just not, he's just, I wish that it had gone better. If you can keep a goalkeeper for a 10, 15 year run, which is very rare these days, then it's good. You don't have to keep on looking for something new, but he, he's gone backwards. And the interest in him is, as well kind of proves that. This guy was being scouted by some of the best clubs in the world at one, at one stage. And now you don't hear a whisper about him. It, it's very telling. Um, sorry to me, but your eye test and the stats, if they if they back everything up, it does tell you a story. Um, <laughs> Damar here. <laughs> when you say defense, it's just rolled on. Yeah, it, it's all mad. Listen, Archie Gray did well um, uh, when, when he was at right back on, in the main. But you're right. Ro Roden is the glue that holds it all together. But Ampadu's done his thing as well. Let's let's be fair to Ampadu next to him. Strauch is good next to him as well. You know, I'm not going to discount that. But Roden is definitely the glue back there. I, I guess some people will say Strauch is, but Strauch isn't assured of his place when he's when he returns fit. We could be seeing that Ampadu Roden partnership from here to the end of the season. We don't know. We don't know. Um. Akon Tony is saying, why are we so down? It was only a draw in the FA Cup. We move on. I think it's just more the point of, of adding another game in, uh, for going to a replay. I'm not down, Tony. I said yesterday, and, I, and I'm maintaining it. I don't think it hurts our momentum going into Br Bristol City. It's a, it's a different game. There'll be different players on the pitch. Uh, there'll be a stronger team on the pitch, you hope. So, yeah, it, it doesn't do you know, get me down in that way. I just wish that we could have finished that Plymouth team off. The team that we had out there should have beaten that Plymouth team. And it's as simple as that, but we didn't do enough to, to kill them off. And Plymouth earned the draw. They did. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, Matt saying, trouble is two goalkeepers on the bench shows we don't have the depth to rotate. Uh, I mean, we could, but he just probably doesn't trust the other players as much as he would if he could get his own players in. I, I would put it down to that. You don't name two goalkeepers on the bench for... You do that to, to make a point at times. Managers have done that through time. Put two goalkeepers on the bench just to say, hey, we're thin here. We're thin here. This is a game that we're trying to rotate a little, but we still need to put two goalkeepers on the bench. So maybe that's just a little message. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, so yeah, I just wanted to just uh, tie the bow up on, on, the, on that yesterday. And yeah, people, I'm afraid that is it. I thought it was going to be good news. I thought it was going to be better news than what I've what I've said today. But that's what happens in football, man. Things change. Things change all the time. Things, are, man. Is ah, oh, I need to see West Brom Wolves, man. West West Midlands derby, man. Love it, love it. Uh, but listen, people, I'm going to leave it there because, well. I'm just going to leave it there. Uh, please like the video before you go if you're watching the replay. Subscribe to the channel. Drop your thoughts below, and I'll see you in the next one, people. Hopefully, it is better news. Peace out.